the question is not, do orbs exist? For they most certainly do. The real question is, what are they? And this is what I want to talk about today, so stick around. I think you'll find it interesting. Welcome, I'm Michael, founder of Observation, the Orb Watcher's Paradise. So the question is, what are orbs? The answer to that question depends on a variety of factors. And today, I want to provide a tool, a chart, that I believe helps answer that question by looking at the process involved that leads to conclusions about orbs into various categories. Some believe that orbs are spirits of humans, uh, angels, demons, uh, time travelers, space aliens, drones, out of focus inanimate particles, out of focus animate bugs, water droplets or vapors, uh, and uh, other things as well. Why are there so many definitions or views? And I believe it has to do with um, three factors. One's worldview, one's research, and one's interpretation of that research. First of all, the world view. It's essential to understand everyone, including me, uh, has a world view that is a set of belief glasses through which uh, everything is sifted to make sense of the world around us. And this includes making sense of facts, of facts about orbs. A world view is not necessarily uh, bad. It just is, but it must be understood and acknowledged if one wants to be honest and transparent and self-aware about the conclusions uh, that are made. For example, if one holds a worldview that there is no supernatural or paranormal reality, then nothing about orbs can ever be supernatural or paranormal. Or if one's worldview is that anything unexplainable has to be supernatural or paranormal, then orbs most certainly can and they must be uh, supernatural or paranormal. Or if one's worldview is that it might be possible for something to be supernatural or paranormal, even though research uh, seems to have proven it is natural and normal, still the possibility is open, but only with a very critical eye. So whatever we believe about orbs, our worldview has some influence on our conclusions about orbs. Second, the research. There are many methods and many techniques, and there's a variety of equipment, some of which I have here uh, on the desk in front of me, uh, that are involved in researching orbs. And each has a different uh, result or outcome depending upon which equipment is used and depending upon uh, what degree it's used. Um, Sometimes conclusions are made about orbs with little to no research uh, because some could care less uh, and have very little interest or time to devote to the subject. And they simply base their uh, view on what others say and on others with whom they agree. On the other hand, sometimes conclusions are made after a lot of research. Some make conclusions very seriously and after much thought, and they invest a great deal of time in research uh, and 
therefore come to their conclusion after that. And some have a passion for orbs, but do little research and simply view the immediate uh, encounter experience um, as they interpret that meaning to be. And so you have various um, perspectives uh, or reasons for people doing research or doing very little to no research. Uh, and I think it's important to understand that one's interest, one's passion, one's research and time all play a part in what conclusions are drawn about orbs. And third, the interpretation. It's essential to understand that so-called facts and facts about orbs can be interpreted in more than one way by two or more people. Uh, sometimes one is right and one is wrong. Uh, sometimes both are wrong, uh, but many times neither are wrong. Let me give you an example. Some have arbitrarily made up and believe orbs must contain and display their own internal light source uh, to be an orb, and nothing else is an orb unless it does that. Um, that's like someone who sees a firefly for the first time uh, saying that all bugs therefore must light up with an internal light source or they are not a bug. Uh, that is an arbitrary statement and belief based only on having seen a firefly. Uh, fireflies that light up with their own internal light source are bugs, but not all bugs are fireflies and do not light up with their internal uh, light source. Orbs can contain and display their own light source, but not all orbs contain and display their own light source, and yet they are also orbs. The bug family is far greater, much larger than the firefly family, but the firefly family is a part of the bug family. Uh, orbs with their own internal light source are a part of the orb family, but not all orbs do that. And the orb family is far greater than just the one type of orb that lights up with its own internal light source. And the problem is that if you think a firefly is the only bug, you're missing out on the evidence that is out there about all bugs that do not light up. And the same with orbs. If you think an orb is only that which lights up with its own internal light source, you're missing out on a lot of evidence about orbs that do not do that. Let me give you another example. Experiments have been done to show uh, when dust is in, on, or very near the camera lens and floating around due to atmospheric conditions, and they appear as balls or what is known as circles of confusion, uh, it's believed that these particles, inanimate particles, are mistaken uh, as living orbs by those who don't understand this process or this phenomenon. Uh, it's true that these dust particles do exist within the orb zone in, on, or near, uh, very near the camera lens, but that does not mean that true orbs do not exist outside and beyond the orb zone. Uh, the interpretation of that experiment by some means that living orbs do not exist. All orbs are dust particles. But to others, it simply means that, yes, these particles do exist, but there's a whole other area outside and beyond the orb zone where orbs as living creatures do exist. Now, having said all that, I want to look at a chart that I've put together 
that I think will be helpful in understanding the process of coming to conclusions that are different uh, in the various categories. Now, when you look at this chart, I have Worldview 1 and Worldview 2. And what I want to do is go down Worldview 1 first and then go down Worldview 2 and the differences will begin to show themselves. The first thing in the process is interest. Some have a great interest and some have very little interest in orbs. And the degree of interest will impact the type of research uh, and the conclusions that are drawn. So you have the interest in worldview number one, you have the research, and then you have the conclusion that is drawn. And in worldview one, the conclusion that is drawn is that orbs are just inanimate uh, particles. Uh, they're natural and normal. Uh, they're terrestrial. They're in this world, but they're just dust particles. They're out of focus in, on, or very near the camera lens, known as circles of confusion, known in the area called the orb zone. It may be water in various forms of rain or snow or fog or steam or vapor. Uh, it also can be uh, camera anomalies uh, or what is known as bouquet uh, uh, rather than dust particles. It's just different uh, things related to light and the camera. Uh, it also, in this category, worldview number one, Orbs are mistaken identities, such as the moon or satellites, uh, stars or aircraft, but very natural, very normal things, or even uh, atmospheric electrical charges that uh, create uh, this orb-looking thing. Uh, and some say they're drones of some kind, either by the government or by private uh, companies. But whatever they are, in worldview number one, it's just natural and normal, inanimate uh, objects that are being mistaken for orbs. Now, worldview number two, you have the interest, you have the research, and you have the conclusion. And the conclusion is that what is being viewed is animate, that is, living. And there are different perspectives on what type of animate creature is being caught on film or being viewed. One side is orbs are supernatural and paranormal. That is, they are human souls or spirits. They're angels, they're demons, they're ghosts, they're gods. Whatever they are, they are animate and they are not of this world. They are supernatural or paranormal in that um, they are beyond our dimension in the spiritual world. Now, the other side of the animate conclusion is that orbs are very natural and normal. Uh, and that means they're either terrestrial or they're extraterrestrial. They're not supernatural, but they're not from this world and they're alien uh, in nature. Um, that's one perspective of the natural and normal. The other is they're terrestrial, and they're either bugs, out-of-focus bugs, out-of-focus uh, birds or animals, or even a time traveler, somebody from this world, but uh, they have gone and left and come back in some way. Uh, that's a way out there view. But I just want to try to cover everything um, that people say about them. Or... It comes down to my definition that I believe orbs are animate, they're natural and normal, they're terrestrial, and they are their own creature and not another creature out of focus or mistaken identity. And my definition sets me apart uh, all alone from the definitions that everyone else gives. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in the next podcast is what is my definition of orbs. 
it's possible based on this chart that you can believe in inanimate orbs, orbs in a dust in a orb zone, out of focus dust particles. Those exist, but you can also believe in orbs as their own unique creature, whether they're supernatural and paranormal or natural and normal. Those possibilities uh, exist. And the existence of one, uh, for example, inanimate dust particles, does not negate the existence of the other, that is, animate creatures in their own right. They both can exist at the same time, but one cannot be both an inanimate uh, particle and an animate creature. So I hope as you look at this chart, it will help you uh, in focusing on how the different views uh, exist and how they come to the conclusions that they do. It's rather a general look, but hopefully it is helpful. But thank you for watching. Your comments are always welcome. And next time I'll look at my specific uh, understanding and definition that sets me apart from everyone else. And until then, uh, keep watching the night sky.